Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and today we're going to be building the ultimate silent gaming PC inside this from ACASA. Let's do this. Are you finding yourself building and repairing PCs all the time? Yes. Are you always misplacing your Swiss army knife that hopefully has a Phillips head screwdriver on it? All of the time. Well, you're in luck. The eTechnics PC Maintenance Toolkit is here, and it has everything you need to build and repair PCs. It even has an Allen wrench for custom loop fittings. Yes, it actually does have a use. Head over to the eTechnics store to find out more in the link in the description below. Tweezers sold separately. So what essentially have we got here? So ACASA actually reached out to us and said that they've got a new product on the market called the Maxwell Pro. I'm going to be honest, I'm not overly struck on the name purely because we've kind of already had something from NVIDIA called Maxwell in the past. So a little bit confused about the naming, but there you go. What we have is one stupidly large heatsink. Now when I say stupidly large, the actual PC chassis itself is very, very small, but its capabilities are massive. What we can essentially do with this bad boy is to house an AMD or an Intel system, both on, you know, latest generation, in conjunction with a kind of weird cooling setup, which comprises of four heat pipes, two which sort of stem over to this side and two which stem over to this side. So to start with, what they've actually sent us is kind of a whole host of goodies, and I will try and get through as much of it as I can, because what we want to do is actually get this built up and then show you kind of what it can do in terms of the performance, because a CASA claim that you can put any CPU into this up to 65 watts. So how do they kind of get away with making it completely silent? Well, to start with, they sent us this, which is a it's called the Compact Power 150. And essentially what it is, is everything that you need to plug a motherboard in, storage devices and so forth. So we have a 24 pin connector here. And then off of that is SATA, Molex, and also our CPU EPS connector. But above and beyond that is this connector, which might look a little bit reminiscent to some people, but it's actually a DIN connector. So it's a four pin power DIN, and then above and kind of beyond that, the way that you connect into it is with what looks like a laptop brick. So that's gonna be the one and only time that I refer to this as a brick, but that's essentially what it is. So it actually looks very good quality for what it is, and it has this brushed plastic on there, but this is the connector itself. So this is gonna be plugged in using a standard kettle lead, and uh, yeah, it's gonna route round to the back of the case, which is then gonna connect into this, which is then actually gonna connect into the rest of our components. So taking a look at some of the other components that they sent us, this case is actually very versatile in the fact that, yes, it's, I guess on my side of things, it's gonna be used for gaming, home theater, media PC, but it doesn't just stop there. This could be used for POS or more on kind of the industrial side of the scale. And because of that, not all motherboards, when you're going down the commercial route, will have all of the features and the functionalities that you need. Sometimes it is one of these things where you have to pay that little bit extra to get extra features, such as Wi-Fi, for instance, which is gonna be very important if this is being mounted behind some POS um, kind of screens or something like that, maybe in an airport, inside a shop, that kind of stuff. So with that in mind, they have actually sent over products that kind of cater for that. So we have the ACASA uh, Omnidirectional Tri-Band Wi-Fi antennas, and they sent us two of them, as well as the actual uh, Wi-Fi um, kind of cables themselves. So if you are looking at getting a Wi-Fi card, which would generally go into um, the slot on the motherboard, you can connect this up and obviously still have that functionality. And that's what kind of the back of the case allows you to do. So we do have the kind of space for our rear IO, which is gonna be for our conventional mini ITX motherboard. But above and beyond that, you've got the connector sort of port here for the DC in. You also have, with these little rubber grommets removed, the area for the Wi-Fi antennas that I was just talking about. And even above and beyond that, you have these two ports for serial connectors, which again, would come in handy if you're looking at utilizing this on the industrial kind of side of things. So industrial, commercial, all to one side, we wanna look at this from a gaming aspect. So we wanna go down the route of seeing how much kind of, you know, performance and raw power we can actually fit inside something that is this small. And uh, essentially what you get is quite a lot inside because you have to remember where this is a completely passive device, we do need to have everything that's going to allow us to transfer the heat away from the main component, which is gonna be the APU that we're using, over to the sides of the case, because what they actually work as is kind of like a radiator. So we have an area over here of fins and an area over here. Anyone who's seen any kind of heatsink design, you will see that that is very reminiscent of what you'd actually see there. 
So ACASA did also send over some of their tin wipes just in case we need to clean things up a little bit. So very handy to have them. So we've got our Ryzen 5 3400G. So we're gonna have decent clock speed. We've got the Vega graphics built into it. Obviously in the future, AMD are looking at bringing out more APUs, especially when we look at the next generation. So it's gonna be interesting to see kind of how much more extra performance we can get out of that and really turn it into something that can game at even more extreme levels of kind of graphical quality. So they do include everything that you need for both AMD and Intel. We are going down the AMD route, so we're not gonna need any, any of the Intel stuff. But it has got the backplate, the brackets, and also the main CPU block itself, which as you can see, we do have four included heat pipes, which will slot through there and help dissipate that heat away from our APU. So motherboard wise, we have gone with the Aorus B550i uh, Pro AX. It's got Wi-Fi built in, it is mini ITX. It's the latest uh, generation of uh, I guess platform from AMD and it's got everything that we're going to need without breaking the bank. We was actually initially looking at going with X570 but the problem there is you are going to have an active fan solution on there and we wanted to make this all about being completely passive not generating any noise whatsoever. So let's take a look at the case strip it down and see really what it's all about and how I guess it's actually meant to function on the inside. So let's start by stripping it down. I mean straight away you can feel the quality behind this. It is a full aluminium uh, sort of, you know, construction. And uh, luckily I have got my handy dandy eTechnics toolkit to take it all apart. So on the top, there's four screws, which we can take out. And it has got kind of a brushed aluminium effect to it, at least on the top panel, as well as the front panel. And the front panel has got this kind of diamond uh, beveled edge to it as well, just to kind of look, I guess a little bit more premium, which I really do like. I do like the fact that uh, I think it would honestly fit pretty well in any kind of living room, anyone who's you know got the whole Ikea-esque look. One thing that's a little bit weird is now that we've taken the screws off, there's really no way of actually taking the front panel off without reaching inside and kind of popping it out like that. Now, when we do look inside, we can see that we do have various different cables for our front panel connectors. So we've got one for our front panel kind of power button. We have our USB 3.0 as well as our standard USB 2.0. Other than that, everything inside is pretty much what I kind of expected. So we do have four standoffs ready for our mini ITX motherboard. There is plenty of ventilation down the bottom as well. And then we can sort of get a first glimpse as to how things look inside in terms of where the heat pipes are gonna go. So you, hopefully you can see there's these kind of ridges down the side, which it looks like the heat pipes are actually gonna slot in there, which is gonna help transfer that heat away from the APU, which is gonna be in the middle of the case, and sort of transfer it over to this side as well as over to that side, where it can dissipate completely out of the sides. So motherboard wise, we've got the B550i Aorus Pro AX. So to start with, we wanna get everything built up on the motherboard, I guess it's kind of as much as we can. So the next step really is adding the CPU block, which looks like this, and it has the holes for the four individual heat pipes to pass through, which look a little something like this. Now, the problem that we've seen straight away is as soon as we put that on there and line it up, we can see that this block's actually gonna be in the way. We're simply not gonna be able to get the heat pipes in and over that particular area because it's just not at the right height. So this is something definitely worth noting that depending on your motherboard, you may have to remove this block here. So there are four heat pipes in total and they are varying lengths. So two of them are the smaller kind like this and two of them are ever so slightly longer and that's purely down to CPU positioning. 
So you can see inside the case, the CPU is close up to this side of the case. So that's where we're actually going to end up putting these smaller ones. So it's just a matter of putting the heat pipe into place and it will slot into that groove that's on the side of the case, pushing it down and you will see some of the thermal compound actually coming out. So we're going to go with one small one, then we're going to alternate to the bigger one. But once that's in place, we can look to take this part, which also has the thermal compound on, position it on top, and then we can screw it into place. So we do now need to put these little panels on, which again, we did put the thermal compound on, and these just hold the heat pipes into place. The problem is the spacing on here. Even though I've got my amazing E-Technic screwdriver, it doesn't actually fit in there. So luckily, if you have a Be Quiet cooler, it will come with one of these screwdrivers, which fits absolutely, well, I say perfectly, it fits just about. understand why Akasa sent me tin wipes it's to clean my hands I mean this is kind of the mess that yeah I've got after now so uh, yeah thanks fruity we have a mixture of shoe polish So first up, I wanted to run a test with a little bit of a, let's call it worst case scenario. So as you can see, we've got OCCT running. It's been running well over 44 minutes now. And while it did have a little spike in the beginning, and we can see that on HW monitor, where it's kind of gone up to a peak of 89 degrees, it's pretty much settled at around 84 degrees. So this is worst case scenario, but let's run some sort of game test where obviously it's going to go up, it's going to go down, and it's going to have a little bit more fluctuation so we can see a general idea as to what them temperatures are going to be like. So we've actually allowed the system to cool down a little bit. And as you can see now, we are sitting comfortably at around 45 degrees. If we were to leave it a little bit longer, we are finding that to go down to about 43. So our idol is, let's say, low to mid 40s. We are actually going to sort of clear the minimum and maximum now because we want to see how this does in terms of gaming. So let's load up Apex Legends and see exactly what we can do. So while this test isn't about the graphical performance, I thought it was worth going through the graphics settings because we are running on a 3400G and obviously there's no dedicated graphics. So we're utilizing both the CPU part and the GPU part. So we are running at 1080p, we've got VSync disabled, we've got, let's say low to medium settings. So we've got anti-aliasing, we've got some texture filtering on, most of the settings are either disabled or on low, but a lot of the detail is on high. So it is gonna still look pretty good considering you know that it's Apex Legends and it doesn't have, let's say, the greatest quality graphics in the first place. So as we actually sort of look on what kind of settings and everything we're getting, we're just gonna pick up some ammo. Uh, what we wanna be looking at is, you can see our frame rate here, just for anyone who does kind of care in regards to the performance, but the temperature, even though it says GPU, that's very um, kind of respective of the CPU as well. So you can see that we're at 56 degrees. Obviously this isn't gonna be the most intense way of, uh, of doing things, but I just wanted to sort of show what things are like, just kind of moving around, trying to get a little bit of kind of action going just so you guys can see exactly kind of, you know, what temperature performance is actually like on this particular system inside the Maxwell Pro. 
So and again, back to desktop, and we can see that our high point was actually 66 degrees. So we had a little spike there, but for the most part, you could see it was sitting around 56 degrees. Uh, we're now going to run Metro purely because it is a pretty extreme benchmark in the grand scheme of things, and we can see exactly how things look there. So while we're not getting, let's say, the greatest frames per second, you've got to remember this is Metro at the end of the day, so I wasn't expecting amazing groundbreaking results on an APU, but that's kind of besides the point. I just wanted to show you something that was kind of taking things to a completely different level in terms of really pushing the boundaries of the GPU side. And obviously with OCCT, we saw the CPU side. And again, we can see everything going up to about 67 degrees. And once it kicks us back to the desktop and shows us what our result overall was, with an average of 19.26 frames per second, it's actually the temperatures we want to be looking at because that's what we're testing here today. And as you can see, even there with a peak of 68 degrees, which is pretty damn impressive when you think about this is a completely passive system. And finally, last up with our kind of gaming test, uh, we got Doom Eternal, 1920 by 1080. We got V-Sync turned off and we are running everything on medium settings, which surprisingly still looks very, very good. Uh, we've got the frame rate and everything locked in so you can see exactly what's going on there. And then we'll jump back to the desktop so you can see, um, you know, kind of how the temperatures have fared in this game if they've actually gone above and beyond what we had before. And anyone who's a content creator will know how difficult it is trying to comment on something while you're actually playing along at the same time. So yeah, we are getting, you know, 38 to 40, even close to 50 frames per second at certain points in this game. And they still look absolutely amazing for an APU, I have to admit. So yeah, anyone who hasn't played this game, I definitely recommend going and doing so. So the results pretty much speak for themselves. We kind of went into this quite blindly. We didn't want to sort of test everything. We wanted to do it along the road with you guys and actually show you even so we could get I don't know, kind of a, a first glimpse of how things are. And I was actually taken back. I mean, running even the most extreme tests. So we're talking Metro, Doom Eternal, pretty high spec, impressive games, especially on something like a 3400G APU, which typically you wouldn't be running those kinds of games on there. Yes, you're not getting 60 FPS, but they were still more than playable above sort of 30 frames per second in certain places. You could even dial back down the settings and try and get higher frame rates. When it came to OCCT, even that, I was expecting it to pretty much get close to 100 shutdown and that would be it. But things actually worked out pretty well. There is going to be a few things that I do want to comment on. Some good, some bad. The first one, the connector that comes with this that converts from the DC in to the 24 pin and that. I do like the fact that you can take this off. So just to kind of, you know, eliminate any cable clutter and cable mess, not that you can see any of it, but I like the fact that this isn't just dangling in there doing nothing. So this is obviously for your SATA, your Molex uh, and so forth. But if you aren't using those particular types of devices, then yeah, you can just take this off. The other thing, if you are looking at utilizing this as maybe a media server, you are going to want some more storage. So they do actually include a bracket here so that you can put your two and a half inch drives in there, whether that be SSDs or even on the hard drive side of things. It just allows you to maybe, you know, up your storage game just that little bit if you haven't got a server or anything like that at home. The Tim Wipes, I'm not overly keen on. They didn't seem to do a great result um, in the grand scheme of things. And I ended up with thermal paste, as you saw, all over my hands. The only other thing that I really want to, let's say, criticize about this. Firstly, the quality in terms of the build quality is absolutely outstanding. I wouldn't expect anything different based on it being an aluminium structure. If anything, it looks like something that would have been made by Streecom or Lee and Lee. It's nice to see something coming from a brand like Acasa where you know that they're not overcharging you some kind of premium like you would get maybe with Lee and Lee and Streecom on a device like this. So 150 pounds, 150 euros probably going to be around $150 in America. I think it's phenomenal value for money and it looks the part. It really, really does. Like I mentioned at the start of this video, I think it's going to look great in any living room setup, any kind of home cinema, any sort of situation where it would blend in. And I guess the only thing I would like to see is maybe a silver version. 
There might be reasons why they went with black, maybe to do with the heat dissipation, but I would maybe like to have seen a silver version and maybe even looking at other versions later on down the line, blue, red, and things like that. But I guess a lot of that comes down to what the consumer wants. Now, the only real gripe I have with it, and this is just me, I guess, being a little bit over analytical, is the heat that is generated for it. You've got to remember, this is a large heatsink unit. When it's at its load, which admittedly we did this during OCCT, so it was a, a more extreme load than what the majority of people out there are actually even going to see. Putting your hand on there for this amount of time, you would have had to take your hand off purely because it just would have got too hot. But that is the most extreme circumstances. So I'm saying basically, if you're planning to run OCCT and you have kids running around, then maybe this isn't the product for you. But that's never, ever going to happen. I just want to make sure that everyone's aware of kind of, you know, the worst case scenarios here. And, and that's pretty much it. You could put your hand on there for a couple of seconds when we was running OCCT and then you'd, you'd physically have to remove it because of the heat. That's just never going to happen, but it's definitely worth mentioning. So there you go, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do. And let me know in the comments section below. Have you got a home theater PC? Do you do a little bit of light gaming on it and things like that? Is this going to be the perfect one for you? The other option is obviously doing this and then using Steam or GeForce Now to actually stream into a PC like this into your living room so you can play them amazing games at even higher resolutions and higher settings as well. That way you could actually go for a cheaper setup inside but still get the amazing kind of, you know, properties that you're going to get with this particular device. So there you go. I will see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.